Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be introducing my animator, Suki. Suki Zhao. So thank Hi. you. <laughs> uh, just a quick intro. Uh, Suki is a graduate from the ACM department at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And I was privileged to be connected with Suki through a professor in the film department. And uh, it's been such a pleasure working with you, Suki. And I just this, the process was so um, it was just eye-opening to learn about the craft of animation and to see how that works with archival materials. So I uh, really am happy to have you here to explain your process a little bit to our viewers on your work with Blurring the Color Line. Oh, thank you. It was an honor to work with you too. I learned so much like as my first project outside of ACM. So this is great. Yeah, <laughs> um, no, it's great. Okay, so let's, um, before we, what I'd like to do today is, um, of course, is to unpack a scene because people really don't know the process and they, they kind of really, the, the challenge of the step-by-step -step process and turning something from an idea into something concrete, you know. So why don't we, before we unpack the scene, is talk a little bit about how we worked mm -hmm. to create this concept first. You know, we had to create a clear concept of how this animation was going to work with the film because it's historical um, and we have to, we're talking about issues of race and racism and Chinese structure, Culture, all these yeah. things. So, yeah, tell us about yeah. what you how you incorporated this. So, like when we first initially met up to like talk about it, you saw you gave out these ideas about calligraphy and like how Chinese culture and sort of like how it might have a effect on the, we could use it for the style of where ink bleeds through the blurring and all that stuff. So I think from there, we kind of took it to giving this look, the whole animation, a ink like style where it's not very clear, but brush strokes and like rough lines and blurring and of everything <laughs> really. So you kind of chose a type of stroke that looks like it bled i mean i don't know mm -hmm. how to say that yeah. a little more yeah clearly it's it's the uh, some of the to the tools you can use in animation or like different paint brushes and stuff so you the ones that we picked i picked for this film was like a blurred um calligraphy brush yeah so and like, tell us a little bit more about like how you worked with the background because you added some texture in the paper background before you even animated on top of it oh yeah so I had like paper um images where I could um overlay and or multiply onto the the drawings and like whatever storyboards there are so yeah that's how why do you why do you think that was important to add that little bit well, of texture to to give it like a sort of a more a more realistic vibe I guess to like so that it's not just like black on white it's like a black on something like paper <laughs> or like a, it has a tone it's not just black and white it's it has a like image like a slight tint of yellowish yeah we talked about yeah. that sepia tone we wanted mm -hmm. that kind of associates with the past right the feeling mm -hmm. of the past yeah yeah it has this aged look Yes, yes. And that's what we're working with. And I feel like when I was struggling to create images is that we had such a lack of archival uh, material to work with. And that's but yet the animation was a place to utilize whatever archival images we had and create on top of that. And I think that mm -hmm. was like the most interesting thing we came up with. Can you talk a little bit about how you work with the archive? Oh, well, the archival images, like when we were looking through them, they were so interesting and like it was so much to like look at like where, where you add to the past if you added on like drew on top of these um archival added and like covered things show more things or like had people interacting within these photos like that sort of brings the photos into life that like you're taking yourself back in time technically kind of yeah like, so through modern technology of animation, I feel like it's so interesting that you were able to create a space that combined the past and the present, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're literally drawing on top of old archival photos. 
yeah. for creating that and then mm-hmm. and bringing that movement into something that's not normally kind of just a still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were there some challenges that you didn't expect that you had to work around? Yeah, like everything was like a new <laughs> learning curve for me. Like all of the the archival photos and stuff like that. I've never like worked with it like this. And there's also how you how you move backgrounds like to to look like they're a 3D space within 2D space. That's also something that I didn't know how to do before starting here, like in this project. Mm. Yeah. It's well, great. You managed that beautifully. <laughs> yeah. And what about the people? And like how did you kind of construct their look? Well, I started off with their silhouette and like if they needed more details, what but our most of it didn't need details because it was like a blur everything is a blur until you have like these small moments where there are details of facial features and like emotions and stuff like that right and then like everything else is sort of uh added on afterwards or after the silhouettes are mostly yeah 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 no mm-hmm. it's great sometimes you want it a little bit ambiguous because that mm-hmm. suggests it's just even more so let's break down the scene um you want to talk about which scene we selected to introduce and unpack let's talk about the quarter scene where marion talks about his um experience of the quarter or where okay he so had people to... haven't seen the film yet oh, okay this oh yeah just, um oh. I won't I won't spoil I don't I don't know should I spoil it for you no it's it's you know because that's it's not it's okay just tell what it's the backdrop the context this is an errand boy who looks he's looking for a job right yeah he he uh a black errand boy who found a job or was trying to get into a job at a Chinese grocery store and the owner um tested him with a quarter he marked the quarter and Guess, checked if it's he had the honesty to return the quarter to him at the end and that was just the sort of um the sequence that we had to do and should i show it now sure and while you're setting that up i just wanted to say that so suki you're working with my interview material first of all like mm-hmm. i have to yeah. select which stories i wanted to animate or or recreate right mm-hmm. um yes Mm-hmm. nobody wants to just watch talking heads the whole entire film so we yeah. need to have visual elements so how do we recreate his story so we chose this one which is like you just said um a, a, an african-american boy at that time remembering in being interviewing for a job as an errand boy and so this is that scene right yeah and mm-hmm. how you created that scenario of bringing to life him in the store and having to sweep up this quarter so okay let's yeah. let's yeah let's let's play it out it's it's okay. a fun scene I- Okay, so we started off with the storyboard, or should I go through the process? Yeah. Sure, talk about the okay. process first. So we started off with the storyboard where we thought of, of where, what we wanted to show and how the framing was going to look. And this is what it looks like. It's really rough. Well, but let's talk, okay, no, I, for me, it's clear, but some people might not. So like the sweep hole frame one. So that for you, you're imagining a broom kind of sweeping the yeah. frame, mm-hmm. right? Yeah and like sweeping into this um, area of a quarter and then Uh where the hand drops the quarter into another hand Uh uh-huh yeah okay okay but but then um, I think before oh I do (laughs) all these okay Okay. so um we also worked with this archival photo which I sort of stylized and like recreated into like this other look and we yeah. sort of use that as a place marker or like a style guide. Right. To show. This I, I remember the process being quite difficult in trying to structure the 3D version of this space. Yeah. Right? Like, how mm-hmm. do we create, like, which side of the wall were the. Uh, yeah. Where was the counter and where was the door into the kitchen and everything like that? Yeah. Was like, a, like, yeah. Right. Process. So, this was the first storyboard to like ever be made I think huh. of this okay so the angle from behind the yeah. cash register was something you you chose to focus yeah mm-hmm. on. and then okay so this was roughly the idea of following what Marion the guy mm-hmm. on the right was telling of his childhood memory of being an errand boy right that, yeah mm-hmm. that his boss had 
questioned him on his integrity by marking the quarter to see if he was going to steal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So we worked off of his story. Yeah. Off of his voiceover and like his story. Yeah. Right. Okay. So then, and then like, after that, we came up, uh, it was during that time that we sort of thought of, oh, what if we use these archival photos and like incorporated it into our animation to make it like a glimpse into history with history, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I used this photo for the exterior of the door and like I had to <laughs> a Photoshop the people out with this in the style of our in the style of our um, animations. Wow. How do you Photoshop somebody out? You had to like just kind of cut the frame um, of them out. And there's, just... there's a healing tool oh. <laughs> a he where you click on a certain area of the frame or of the image that you want to um, replicate uh -huh. and you click back over what you're hiding and it'll sort of like blend it in and wherever there's like of course it's not perfect so always there's uh going back in with like brushes and everything to like clean it up wow so that's how they disappeared well like wait, can you go yeah. back to that photo i just want to see like the comparison oh so that frame in the background is still there yeah um, this door frame is is all there the window then... frame looks almost animated in this picture though the, oh. window, the window side of the oh the the yeah. window yeah the, the side the, of the window the panel the wooden thing the, this panel yeah. yeah this one yes it is it's like oh. a, a bit of a drawn version okay it's because it, it cut off there was a limited oh. amount of draw like image to use so right. i had to like improvise yes. i see you filled in the rest of the uh, mm -hmm. wall oh yeah the building cool okay mm -hmm. that that's fascinating to me you know how you can do that okay uh, Okay, and then we had other archival images, which like expanded what we could use it for. So this was one of them too. Yeah, and this I was one of the old, sorry, back up for that photo. Yeah. This was very, this was an important image for us because it was one of the only images that I could salvage from the community in Augusta um, that had actual relationship between a Chinese storekeeper and an African-American um, worker in that same space. There were no photos, you know? Um, so we really treasured this image as a reference point. And this, and these are all different stores because I think the store image from the outside that you just showed us was different from this, this store, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So how did you take these people out and use that background in, in your animation? Same thing. Uh, so same, same sort of thing, except um, this one couldn't use the healing tool as much because there's so much going on. Uh -huh. um, like there's like all these cans in the background and there's all these uh, things. So that one needed um, a lot more in improvising with like taking a swatch of color, uh, the tone and like covering over with the lines and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But I, I kept the miss the storekeeper in his original Asian-ness of baldness and like everything <laughs> in the, yeah, he, I kept him intact sort of so that I could animate him and like turn him into this mobile um, character. Cool. That's I will really show good. the next one. Yeah. Okay. This is, so we were also thinking about roots and stuff, like how it's sort of like you're digging from the roots of the story and like drawing from your roots and stuff. Yeah, we that was we that was scrapped afterwards. So. Yeah, but that's interesting of a process because sometimes um, in the filmmaking process, you you have these great ideas of creating these metaphors and bigger you know images. Like for me, I wanted to play with roots, but then somehow it didn't work, and so we had to scrap mm -hmm. all that. So yeah. yeah. So this is the scene where he kind of accepts him to that he's hired, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so this is the image that you worked with based on that old photo. Hang on a sec. I just want to. Oh, okay. Should I pause? Okay. No, it's okay. You can go through it, the whole thing, and then we can go back to it if you want. Okay. So that's the whole sequence. And then you insert okay. him. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So, so I, yeah, let's look at this photo for a sec. So this is that 
this is for me the ideal kind of like how the past works with the present in through your animation you were mm -hmm. able to recreate the scene using the background of the original photo and then you mm -hmm. were able to animate the storekeeper based on the actual guy in the photo yeah mm -hmm. and you just drew out the contours and the outline of the, the counter which i think is so neat to have yeah. that little bit of animation plus the archival image it's really mm -hmm. really interesting yeah yeah cool and then, and then we are also doing like thinking of doing words on screen but then oh yeah that was scott too exactly yeah. forgot about that mm -hmm. okay okay next so, one yeah and then this is i think a more finalized storyboard of it where we had the images okay So it's kind of a refined um, mm -hmm. version of what we really wanted to do without the screen. Yeah, this yeah. is, I think this is the final animation. Oh, this is the final animation. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Where there are different frames. Yeah. I can show the, maybe the process or the little, yeah. what it looks like from my point of view when I animate yes. it. Yes. So this is what it, uh, the program that I use, Turn Boom Harmony. And to get these individual, like the little movements in these people, I had to like had a frame for like each body part or like little body parts that moved on their own. And like, oh, I should scroll this. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Okay. So this is um, the what it looks like. This is called the timeline on the bottom here, uh -huh. and. It's where we add our frames for whichever object it might be. And so when there are more little frames, it means like there it's a little bit more smoother and like more movement that's like needed to oh. be. Yeah. So and how long does that process take just to even do like a little sequence like that sweep, for example, you just showed? Well, it takes quite a long time because each individual frame is its own drawing in a sense where you're moving something slightly over and there's this need to like match it up with the previous frame uh -huh. so that it doesn't look weird. Um, it takes about, I think, uh, around an hour or so to like just do a couple of these mm -hmm. or like to do a single aspect because the dust is its own like its own entity that you have to animate. And then the, the broom is its own entity that you have to animate. So it's wow. a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. For like these few seconds. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. The amount of work that goes into just a little scene like that. Is there a possible way to play it with the sound of the finished scene or through oh, this program? Or do for the, for do this? I the don't, whole scene? I'm not sure. Let me see if it is. Do you hear it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not playing for you. Okay, let me take off my headphones. Okay. Oh, okay. That, Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear it now. So if you want to open up your screen a little bigger to okay. see the whole. So this is the sequence right. just to kind of like uh, conclude is like you just shared your whole process of mm -hmm. how all the work that went into just creating this tiny little sequence in the film. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to hear what he's saying. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm, the audio of my laptop is not the greatest. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and like well, my speaker is like listening from the microphone of the computer. Don't worry. I think yeah. people are just gonna have to watch the film and and, and yeah, really too bad. <laughs> Gotta buy those tickets. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I think this is just a glimpse into the many many areas that we created together. These little beautiful sequences that tell the stories of the past by using what we had. And, and turning it into something new and, and interesting. So yeah, um, maybe next time we unpack a different scene.
Great. Okay. So is there anything else you wanted to kind of like just share as an animator, um, you know, why you do this and how, how this form of storytelling is important in a way? Well, you want to stop like sharing screen? Yeah, let me just stop sharing. Yeah, I, I mean, I just like art. So like, when you when you tell stories, it's like a totally, um, it's like, a picture is a 1000 words, but a 1000 pictures is an animation. And you can get like a huge story from that. So um, it, it's time consuming and very stressful. And like, it's not the greatest of all jobs, but it's it rewarding at the end. So once you get it's a process that you hate, but a completed product that you will like. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel it, Suki. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to break down more things, but maybe in a different time. Um, some of your renditions of the entire neighborhood is just like such an art piece. You know, it's it's just this really beautiful piece of just you know, it's a portrait, and and you took that time to create that world based yeah. on your creativity and talent. So really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, so everybody who wants to see more of Suki's amazing artwork in the, the film, come watch it, Blurring the Color Line. Okay, and if you need some more information, go on our website, www.blurringthecolorline.com. Thank you. Thanks, Suki. Okay, thank you.